Hey everybody, I'm um, going to do a quick little video about this crazy arcade that I keep posting about. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking questions, so uh, we're going to go through sort of the ins and outs of how it works, what it does, what's inside it, and uh, hopefully uh, all your questions will be answered. First off, we're going to take a look at the back. Uh, it's a traditional arcade cab. It's Got a crappy, heavy swinging door. I will open it up. Uh, your arcade may not come with a cat, uh, so your mileage may vary. Uh, on the inside, uh, I gutted the entire arcade cab. Um, it used to have like a big tube TV in here and all the electronics and uh, the jammer board and all that stuff was mounted on the outside. So I basically ripped it apart and I put uh, a basic Windows computer in here. I mounted a motherboard. Um, it's the regular Gigabyte sort of HTPC board uh, with a AMD A6 5400K uh, CPU. Uh, it's about 3.8 gigs. It's uh, it's pretty powerful. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, got a EVGA uh, GTX 660 on the inside for the video card. Uh, so I'm running DVI output. Um, into a 23-inch uh, monitor. Um, you got a little powered USB hub down there, a bunch of stuff plugged into it, uh, and a bunch more peripherals that I'll get into in a minute. The bottom looks absolutely horrible, so it's, uh, it's a good thing that it's dark. And uh, we'll go around the front and uh, explore that a little more. So I tried to keep the machine as original as possible, but it was a Midway Bowling Arcade machine, uh, which is just the ugliest fucking machine you can think of. Uh, had a big ugly control panel here uh, with a skinny little uh, bar, and it basically just had a one player button uh, and a, a big ugly bowling ball shaped trackball right here. Uh, so I ripped all that shit out, <coughs> um, and I built a... Um, a modest but effective uh, control panel out of a, uh, a $12 particle board shelf from uh, Aubuchon Hardware. Uh, the underside of it is a little more interesting than the, the upside of it. Um, it's all hand wired as you can see how messy it is. Um, all the buttons are mapped to an IPAC. Uh, an IPAC 2 unit, which is basically your uh, your joystick and button control unit, uh, runs on Windows 7, um, and it's a uh, it's pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. So that just sort of slides back in there, <clears throat> and uh, we have a full array of buttons. Uh, that's the quarter. So when you put a quarter in, uh, bloop, and that's your start button. Um, and it works basically just like a regular arcade game. There's, a, there's, there's really no surprises. I wanted it to be as authentic feeling as possible. Um, so these are uh, sort of HAP style joysticks. They're eight way joysticks. So they go left and right and up and down and also right, left and right down and all that stuff. Um, you know, your basic buttons, I uh, went with the HAP buttons because uh, they're one eighth inch and uh, they're a lot easier to drill out than some of the other buttons. Um, and they just have that nice little clicky arcade feel, which is a it's a big thing for me. Um, same thing on the two-player side. We got you know two-player button, and uh, if you get two-player and start, then that guy comes in, uh, and then you can play a two-player game. Uh, so that's pretty neat. Uh, for some reason, that is not mapped to the right mappings right now, but we'll ignore that. Um, so basically, everybody wants to know what this guy is. Um, this is a little Re8, I think. Uh, it's a little uh, Chinese uh, $12 wireless keyboard. Um, it's basically a full function keyboard. I don't need to use it when I'm in the emulator. Everything's set up so um, you can use uh, the buttons to control. I, you can even use the iPack thing to uh, to do macros and special buttons and shift buttons. So instead of hitting escape on that, like if I want to get out of here, I hit escape. Um, but instead of doing that, I can just do one player and coin in, and that's mapped to escape as well. Uh, the front end that I'm using is uh, it's called M Galaxy, and it's a fantastic little front end. It's light. Uh, it's it's just 
it's a beautiful little front end um, and it gives you some graphical options um, and it also indexes your games for you and it also runs multiple emulators so that's really it really comes in handy uh, and what that means is this emulator is MAME uh, it's the multiple arcade machine emulator as a lot of you know um, this plays basically every arcade game ever made uh, so if you want to play Spider-Man the video game you select that one um, and then it gives you this garbage and then uh, it's basically exactly like you remember it in the arcade when you were a child um, put in a quarter and then you start and no one wants to play as Submariner because Submariner sucks um, so you know same thing as the arcades um, when you want to get out you just hit escape or you can do that to hit escape uh, player two cancels that um, but there's over 7,000 arcade games that you can you can play um, all the most popular ones all your favorite ones from when you were a kid uh, even the really obscure ones that you just never saw in American arcades like Street Fighter 3 uh, Second Strike or whatever the hell this game is called um, and it's it's got some some really cool features in, in these games too um, you know a lot of them come with like little marquee artwork on the bottom uh, you know this one I'm sure you really didn't see these in the dream machine um, and you can map all these buttons you notice that I did six button layouts instead of two or four like there's a million different combinations that you can do um, but I, I wanted to get all the fighting games right so um, you have to remap all the buttons so you know when when the game starts you have you know you always have uh, soft punch medium punch hard punch uh, soft kick medium kick hard kick um, you know and then all your uh, all your basic combinations of that stuff so I really wanted to get that right for the fighting games because that's pretty cool when your friends come over um, and uh, there's a lot of um, analog games that require uh, an analog joystick these are digital joysticks so uh, they basically only have clickies um, and you can't really rotate them in an analog manner um, so you're either pushing a button or you're not analogs are sort of like uh, big potentiometers like you're turning a knob uh, if you will um, but I was really I really wanted to play like the old Star Wars games um, like if you go to uh, Star Wars, the original Vector version, um, you know, game. right after the movie came out, and this is like, this is the game that I wanted to play when I was a kid, but, um, you can't really do the analog, so I mapped it to, uh, my trackball, and this is going to be a little wonky, but, um, you know, so, you can go there, and I'm actually navigating with the trackball, and I need two hands to do this, but, um, and this is just possibly the best game on earth um, like I said a little tough to do it with one hand but you get the point if you've played the game you know how awesome it is um, <clears throat> the other cool part of this is the light gun um, this is the aim track uh, light gun uh, it's pretty dope uh, it costs a hundred dollars uh, it's very expensive, but it's worth every penny if you enjoy arcade shooter games like I do. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, it's a giant pain in the ass to get running, uh, to get it calibrated. Um, but if you are a fan of games like game. Police Trainer, like I am, then you are in heaven with this guy. Um, so basically, uh, you can take the crosshairs on or off. I'm going to leave them on just for the sake of uh, demo. Uh, I'm going to put a coin in, I'm going to hit start, and then you got to step back a couple, um, and then you basically, uh, you just have to have some fun with it. Um, it is pretty accurate once you get it going, uh, and it's fast, and it's, it's accurate, and I really like it. So if you have uh, an arcade, uh, I highly recommend uh, you get one as well. Now we're going to get to the fun stuff. Um, like I said, uh, this is uh, a multi-emulator front end. Uh, if you're like me, you like a lot of the Sega Mass, uh, the Sega Sega Model 2 and Model 3 games. You might not even know what that means, but you will once I start loading them. Um, 
You can do uh, the MAME emulator. Uh, right now I have Future Pinball, um, as well as the Sega Model 2 and Model 3 games uh, all set up. So once you get to the Sega Model 2, you can do uh, possibly the best game ever made when you're at an arcade. And that is House of the Dead. Uh, and this is a tough one to kind of get running. You need a separate emulator called Model 2 Emulator. <clears throat> um, but this works flawlessly. Uh, and what you do is, it's exactly like the arcade. Um, and so, hopefully, um, it works as normal in the arcade with the reload off screen. Um, and uh, you'll see. Uh, so all the, the features from the arcade game are present in there. My aim's a little off because uh, I'm holding the phone and all that. But um, that is what it is. Um, and you get all the other cool ones like Virtua Cop. Uh, Virtua Cop's one of my favorites from the Fun Spot days. Uh, and it's the same thing as the other one. Uh, and this one is probably one of my favorites overall. And once again, pardon me. Um, um, uh, not bad, right? Definitely be a lot less accurate. Anywho. There's only so much magic I can do when I'm uh, holding a phone. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's basically it. And uh, I just wanted to sort of go through how it works, what it does, if you're interested. If you're not, you wouldn't be still watching at this point. Um, so yeah, uh, the only other thing worth mentioning is uh, this is a Star Wars marquee. It's not an original. Um, you can get them on eBay for like $18. Uh, and behind it, uh, for the marquee light, I bought a like an $8 set of LED rope lights uh, that I ran behind it. And it looks really nice. Um, it looks really nice with all the lights off. I'm just going to turn all the lights off real quick. You can sort of see how good the whole the whole unit looks uh, as, a, as a whole in the dark. Because um, that's basically what you're looking for. You want that sort of arcade experience. Um, trackball works like a charm uh if we go to uh arkanoid for example uh, 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 we'll go we'll go original arkanoid uh, and see if we can get the stupid hardware timer so i'll pause that and there we go arkanoid is loaded uh and this is this is just such a fantastic game and it's aged very well in my opinion in 40 years um and this uses the trackball it's a it's a really cheap but nice trackball um, I've had no problems with it whatsoever. Uh, it's got nice tension to it. Um, and this is cool. You get the sort of marquee to, or so, I'm sorry, the bezel uh, to see what all the, the cool little tablets do as well. Once again, sorry for all the, the shaky handwork. Um, there's no original speakers in there. I ripped those out. Um, they were just ugly and took up a lot of space. So what I have in there is uh, just a basic uh, cheapo Bluetooth speaker uh, that I hooked up to the PC audio. And outside of all this stuff, it's a, uh, I mean, this is a Windows computer. And I got the trackball hooked up so, you know, if I need to do all of my maintenance, if I want to, you know, change anything in my main folders. And I also mapped have side buttons on this thing. Sorry, I'm going to turn the light back on so we can actually see what's going on. Uh, there's buttons on each side of the machine as well, so um, you can play pinball with the actual flipper buttons, but I mapped this guy to uh, to be the left click on the mouse, so once I'm in Windows, you know, I can do my navigation like I normally would, and then if I need to open a folder, um, you know, I can just use the button. So I wanted to keep it as keyboard free as I can, but that th that thing is there for, um, let's see, um, show you another feature of MAME. Uh, sorry, get confused sometimes. Uh, for all these games, you can uh, you can change settings for everything. Once again, you can use the the keyboard or the the controls. I this is just easier to do this. You can change with the analog controls, do the sensitivity of them. Um, you can change your inputs. 
uh, all that stuff. Everything is customizable. Um, you can change your video options. Um, you can get rid of those uh, those bezel cards if you don't want them. I think they're pretty cool and you don't lose too much. So that's that. Um, the front end's cool because you can actually have it automatically load videos. Like, you know, I've, I've got a whole bunch of them. Not all of them, of course. It'd be impossible to get 6,000 tiny little videos of stuff. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it runs, it runs pretty flawlessly and it's super light. Um, super fun every game you can imagine uh, even stuff that's really hard to run like Launching cruising game. world uh, cruising USA and it loads exactly like you know any arcade game it does a, a ROM check and it does a board check um, some of them connect to the internet like this one uh, it doesn't really it, it doesn't matter but um, but like I mean these they're just like everything you've ever imagined um, you can do the cruise the USA thing you know, do automatic transmission, um, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, that's kind of all I got. Uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, check this out. I uh, put a lot of work into it. Um, I just finished the top this weekend. It's a, uh, it's a really cheap way to get a nice, shiny, uh, glossy look to the board. It's still a piece of shit. Uh, uh, particle board shelf underneath but I drilled out a piece of plexi um, <clears throat> where all the buttons are and everything <coughs> mounted the trackball um, and we painted the bottom side of the plexi flat black so the top isn't actually painted it's nice and smooth uh, like plexiglass would be but uh, because we have flat black on the bottom it looks nice and nice and shiny and fun uh, and it also picks up fingerprints and cat prints very well because uh, Miss Delilah likes to uh, climb up on the arcade unit. But, uh, alright, that's it. Uh, thanks for uh, for watching. Uh, I'm sure you'll see much more of this if you're friends with me on Facebook. Later.